Friday, everybody. Josh here with On the Wrong Lead, joined as always by with uh, by yeah, by Matt Carlson here for another episode of You Gotta Be Shot Tinning Me. Uh, this calendar, man, it it is playing tricks on us because uh, yeah, we're, we got we got some Sunday racing. I know you said it's it's usually like what one time one time a month they run on Sunday uh, or Sunday for us. Which I guess technically is Sunday for them too. No, this is this is the usual day. It's one time a month they run on Friday night into Saturday. So this is Saturday night into Sunday. So this is oh, okay. this is normal. It just hasn't been normal in two months now, so you're not used to it. But it's this is what it should be, quote unquote. So. Oh, there we go. But uh yeah, so we got uh we got three races to cover. Uh got a lot of content out there uh this week. Uh I recorded with um Andrew Champagne for our usual drink and champagne. So that was uh, that was earlier this week. I did a podcast with Chase talking about the late pick five at Fairgrounds today. Uh, that did not go so well. Uh, but uh, and then uh, yesterday I recorded with uh, one of my favorite uh, gambling podcasters, uh, Tim Lawson from The Better Life, and um, you know he's he's talked a little bit about horse racing. And it was just really interesting to get, you know, get an outsider's perspective, someone who likes gambling, who likes horse racing, but, you know, it doesn't spend the amount of time that, you know, us idiots do uh, on it. And, uh, you know, just kind of ask him, like, why not? You know, um, we, we ended up going off the rails all kinds of places because I, I was just excited to talk to him. And, and it's, always, it's always fun to get somebody else's, like, talk about gambling in general with somebody uh so we talked a little bit about that podcasting and 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 we talked horse racing a bit um it was really funny uh he was mentioning that during covid he used to drive uh he was working from home a lot and so he would just drive to charlestown and play uh and he would just play the horses he he just he'd bet like two bucks on each race and just like spend two hours there and uh I was like, man, like I, I'm laughing, like you know, we know Charlestown very well. Uh, uh, I don't know and, about very well, but kind of well. <laughs> well, well, I'm saying we know it very well, as in like, you know, to us, you know, the level of racing and stuff, like like where yeah, it kind of yeah. sits, uh, you know. And it's just like, yeah, he's like, he was just like, su- he loved it, and it was super excited about it, and uh, uh, it was cool to talk to him about that. But uh, yeah, give that a listen if you haven't yet. Um, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I I went through my cocktails already, so unfortunately I'm I got just water. Uh, I had a couple of uh, a couple of Manhattans uh, to uh, to warm up uh, today. It's been freezing cold here. Like earlier in the week, we were like I think we were hitting like negative ten, negative fourteen, negative fifteen. Um, it warmed up. We hit the twenties yesterday, I believe, uh, and then we we're back down. I think uh, we're at four degrees right now. So uh, we've uh, it's been freezing cold here. Obviously, uh, I know we're we're talking about Hong Kong here, but uh, the cold has affected uh, racing pretty heavily. Uh, we got a lot of cancellations this weekend. So hey, maybe if you're not someone who normally plays uh, Hong Kong, maybe you'll, maybe you'll have a couple bucks left over uh, to fire at it. But uh, how, how how are you holding up out there? It's uh it's been similarly cold. I feel like the you know the chill that's been affecting the entire country has uh has reached the northeast too. We're not quite that cold. Uh, you know, I think we're somewhere in the low twenties tomorrow, wind chill of about, you know, three or four. So uh that's not too exciting. I will say I do have to experience it every day waiting outside at a bus stop for my for my son. So <laughs> um, you know, it's it's a lot nicer inside than it is outside. But yeah, we uh you know, we're getting past a couple of snowstorms. We're, uh, you know, braving the cold weather. And, hey, you know, it's it's nice in some ways because I don't have anything else to do but sit inside and watch horse racing. And oh, there you go. Swear at Gulfstream, you know, during the day. So, yeah, there's that, some benefit to it. I yeah. shouldn't, you know, there, there's no lawn to mow. Or there's nothing else like I, I, you know, should be doing outside. I got excuses to just DJ in a little bit. So, yeah, luckily the snow stayed away a little bit. I mean, it, it hit us really hard a couple of days and then, you know, uh, luckily I live in a condo, so the association takes care of all that. So it's it's pretty, um, it's it's pretty easy for us. Like we'll we'll go out and shovel, uh, but we're talking about, and we're talking like a sidewalk that's like forty feet long, if that. You know, it's not it's not very long. You know, and it's just a sidewalk, uh, and 
if like honestly if we really wanted to and just waited like the association would take care of it uh but like the streets and the driveway are, are really the, the important part so they they take care of that for sure but uh yeah it's pretty uh yeah, it's pretty pretty low key with uh, with the outside work here, so which which is nice, but um, yeah. Uh, so we got three races we're gonna look at here. Late pick three as usual, um, and I don't know. May, maybe I'm I'm taking a couple of stands here. Uh, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be pretty narrow. I think through the sequence. I think I'm one by two by two, uh, if I remember correctly. But uh, let's uh. Let's take a look here. Uh, we got race one. We're going 2,000 meters. Uh, the Kung Shan handicap here. And, uh, you know, I didn't look much further than the high weight in this race, uh, the one, uh, Bourbon Air. And, you know, this horse uh, has got two wins in, in 20, 20 ish starts here at, uh, at Sha Tin. Um, has done fairly well at the distance. Has got a has got a second uh, going this distance. Um, you know they've kind of bounced him around uh, various distances. They don't really. I, I don't know if they just don't really know what to do with the horse. But you know when when he's going these you know the two thousand meters, he seems to get the lead, and there's just not really anybody else. I don't think that's going to really want to go. Maybe the four is going to show some speed, but. I mean, his best running has been done, you know, coming from off the pace, uh, and, and so maybe they'll, they'll, you know, go back to those tactics. Uh, the five has got maybe a little bit of speed, but I don't know. There, there's just not really a horse out here. The eleven uh, has got some speed, but I don't. I think the one's going to find himself out there alone on the lead, and I think if if he can slow it down enough. Um, you know, he, he's got a chance to steal this one. Um, the, the figures I think on him are a little, uh, on the, uh, on the pedestrian side. Uh, and, and maybe this is one that, that needs to, um, either shed some weight or, or possibly just drop down in class, uh, in order to, uh, you know, kind of do his, you know, do his best running, um, uh, if I was going to use another horse, it'd probably be the other logical, which is the four CP Brave. Um, you know, he it looks like he's going to be coming f coming from off of it. Uh, is coming off of two really really nice wins here. Um, but yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try uh, I'm gonna try to go with this one here and see uh, see if he can steal it. So I, I feel like normally we're we're on the same page with a lot of this stuff and we've been pretty in sync with with all of our picks but i'm way different than you and so maybe this will be a good thing for a change because we'll yeah. be able to spread kind of our opinions you know, <laughs> if you remember back to last week when i said the sequence was going to pay eight dollars and it paid fifty two hundred dollars yeah. then i think we need to spread a little bit here so maybe that's influencing my place um you know you you talk pace and i, I agree with you i think the one has a pretty good chance to do it if you look at that race two back you know again it, it did get the lead and it was you know it was against the track that day so um you know i, I think it's it's got a decent enough shot to go at that again i don't think it you know embarrassed itself you know kind of at that first crack going a mile and a quarter um the pace horse i thought or another horse that i thought could get the pace that hasn't actually run at the distance was the nine beauty live um you know i i I tend not to like pace horses, I guess, that are drawn wide, kind of sitting at the top weight. I think it doesn't, you know, behoove them to, to do that, right? You rarely you'll see a top weight horse kind of run the, around the track. So I was like, okay, who could potentially press? And I, and I thought the nine maybe had a chance to do that. Um, you know, I don't love the horse, but, um, you know, I, again, I think if a horse can show a little bit of speed at shorter distances, I think it's kind of on the upswing. If you look at those, you know, kind of pace numbers, I'm looking at like an increasing pace figure for that. So, um, you know, hey, maybe it's on the improve. Maybe it'll it'll flash some speed kind of going a little bit longer um, and maybe it can, you know, maybe it can wire, um, you know, instead of that one. So so from a pace play, I I was looking kind of similar to you were and, and I kind of like the nine. Um, a horse I thought you'd go back to, and, and I think this is probably indicative of the way I handicap. I'm going to pick up your trash a little bit here, and a horse you've talked about twice. I'm going to go with the 13 Kai Ying generation. Um, <laughs> you know, you've you've been plugging this horse, waiting for it to do something, and it's it's looked pretty bad the first couple of times out. So, um, you know, but hey, I think maybe 
you look at it, right? They they entered it at what well, I'm going off memory here. I think they entered it up at six furlongs. It didn't look too good. They entered it at a mile. It didn't look too great. Um, you know, hey, maybe it's just trying to build some fitness up for a race like this. So, um, you know, I think maybe two turns is what it wants. You look at some of the pedigree in that. I think, you know, there's probably some numbers indicating it wants to go that mile and a quarter or at least go two turns. So um, I don't love a ton in this race, to be honest with you. I thought it was a, you know, a competitive field, but albeit a little bit of a dull one. And sometimes that happens at these mile and a quarter races, just, just not enough data, you know, to, to kind of justify picking one. So, you know, I, I think, like I said, in a couple of times, right, go for a lower weight and, you know, the longer the race, the the more that weight has impact. So um, let me take a crack at, at your horse that you're abandoning here <laughs> and the 13. Um, the other horses that kind of piqued my interest, the five, I think just naturally it's two for two at the distance. It gets a good draw. Um, my concern there, right. It's, it's picking up 16 pounds over the last race because it won. That's a lot of weight to pick up. Um, you know, but maybe it can overcome it in a pretty weak field, right. If, it, if this is what it wants to do, it gets a good draw. Um, I think to me, that's a, that's the logical. Anytime you're getting a horse that is undefeated at the distance, I think you have to go there. Um, and the only other one I thought the horse I thought would probably take a lot of money that I'm going to take a stand against, I think is a 11 wood fire bro. You mentioned that horse. Um, it got second last out on a DQ. Um, funny enough, I think this is the only time I've seen this. I don't know if your PP show this where it says it was up front and it was running second and third um, in that. I think that's a typo, to be honest with you. I think with the DQ, something got screwed up because this horse, mm. I think, was sitting in back. Um, and it tries to close and it gets closed off like right in the end. And you rarely see DQs here, but um, it was warranted, right? It gets, it gets shut off at the end. I think a lot of people are going to see that. I think they're going to say, oh, look, it, it would have won and it not get shut off. I'm not too confident. I mean, watch the price. Um, but, you know, I, I think because it's going to take money, people are going to overbet that seeing a line. Um, and, you know, I'm hesitant in a very flat field to take a, a horse at a short price. So give me the 13 um, as an A. Give me the 5 and the 9 as Bs and – the 11 we'll watch the price on and, and see where we go from there yeah it's interesting with the uh the five you know you look back through some of the um the past races right uh and you look at the rating on the horse the horse was uh started at 64 went up to 70 then went up to 76 and looked like he was probably carrying the high weight at 133 and then literally the next race uh you know is still the same rating but because of, like you said, the overlaps in the ratings, uh, technically went up in class, and all of a sudden was the low weight, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so so it's kind of it's getting those sixteen pounds back. But what's funny is he's still running at less weight than he was two races back. Yeah. Um. So, um. Yeah. The, the five I thought was a little interesting, uh, along with the four, uh, here. Um. Yeah, you know, you, you make a good point about the thirteen, and and I really didn't think about, I didn't really think about the, you know, th this is a horse that was was purchased and, and brought over. Has got two starts here at, uh, um, at Shotin, and, and they're both pretty kind of unremarkable, um, but yeah, I mean, maybe this is the horse that, like you said, they're just trying to build fitness into, and, and maybe they, those are just kind of paid works. Um, and, and maybe, maybe they think they got to stay here here. So that, I mean, that's a, that's an interesting, interesting way to look at this race. Um, and, and also with your nine, um, yeah, I mean, this is a horse that's, that's been, that's been sprinting going seven, seven furlongs, it's been going the, the eight furlongs. Um, and you know, now, now going this route distance, uh, for the first time. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, you, you don't see you see the horse kind of kind of getting those pressing trips, but not necessarily on the lead. But with the slightly more inside draw, maybe just in, inherits the lead since, since it is drawn inside of the the one. But um, yeah, I I I I I love that you remember what horses I pick because I sure as heck did not remember picking uh, Kaying Generation. But then like I, I start thinking, I'm like, oh yeah, this is a horse that got bought and and they they brought over. Uh, which which is a, a kind of an angle I always like to uh, like to bet. So uh, good job, uh, good job with that memory. Because I, I, I think try January, uh, to be honest, right? You know, I think it's uh, 
It's helped me remember all my losses over the course of the past three Dude, weeks. Dude, you want like like low key? What's what's really funny is uh, I, I'm not doing dry January, but I've uh, I've definitely slowed down uh, drinking, and not that I was like drinking a ton, but you know, definitely on the weekends, it's like it was like clockwork. All right, it's the weekend. It's Friday night. I'm gonna have three beers. Or I'm gonna have you know three pours of whiskey. Saturday, same thing. Sunday, I'll have a beer or two during the day, you know, and then. You know, if I'm streaming on Thursday night, sometimes I'll have a drink then too. Uh, but like, it never like, you know, I'm not having like five or six, five six drinks in a night. I mean, that's that's that that's that's only on vacation. But now it's like, I don't know, man. Like, I have like one drink, and like, it just hits you so like so much faster, and like you kind of just like I kind of just like like didn't feel great, and I was like. I think I'm just gonna have the one cocktail. Like I'm like, I don't know. This is like this is like doesn't doesn't feel right. I don't know. So maybe uh, you know you'll have to let me know uh, February one uh, when you crack open that beer how that feels. Uh, <laughs> have you done dry? Have you done dry January before? I or? haven't. Right, and that's no. part of why I wanted to do it. I I was thinking back. I'm like, was the last time I took a month off of drinking? And I'm like, high school maybe. I mean, that sounds bad, but you know, just yeah. not same with you, right? Not that I feel like I you know wasn't taking days or even a week or two at a time off but it's just been a while so i'm like all right let's try it see if i miss it and you know so far so good so i'm sorry i still see that prop sitting back there so that's it's resting it's cellaring you know <laughs> there it's you just go. stacking my cellar so um my buddy uh alistair who uh i work with and he he does game nights we do a game night at this place and um he was like, I'm going to do dry January. And then he's like, you know what? I'm going to do the whole year. And sure enough, he hasn't had it. He didn't have a drink for the entire year of 2023, wow. which is funny because in 2022, we used to go out and play trivia at this brewery and, you know, we would kick back a couple beers uh, there. So, like, he was just like, yeah, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to drink for a year. I was like, Okay, I see you. Let's see see how that that works out. But now we're into we're into January, and I was, so I'm curious if uh, if he's gonna crack open a beer at game night. Uh, but he he's been doing the NA beers, like uh, was it Athletic Brewing and um, now Revolution starting to do hop water. I don't know if you've if you ever had that before, but it's basically sparkling water with hops in it. Um, and it, it tastes like, it tastes exactly like it sounds hoppy, sparkling water. You know, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's interesting. I'm not like the, the biggest fan of it. Um, but especially, well, and mostly because I'm not a hop head. Maybe if I was like someone who really, really loved IPAs, like maybe it would, it would satisfy something, but you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for the, the malty, the, the barrel age stuff. So. Um, I, I don't really think that they, that, that, that's something you can really do an NA style of, uh, uh, successfully. So, um, but, uh, moving on here, race nine, we're going 1400 meters, seven furlongs, uh, and we are in class two and, um, yeah, why don't you why don't you get us started? Where did you start? Yeah, off and and so it, it's funny. Last race, I was like, I really don't love anybody, right? So I went kind of wide. This race, I feel like I was the opposite. Like I I really like a lot of horses in this race. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've I've actually probably talked about a fair number of horses in this race. So I I think it's a it's a really competitive race for the opposite reason, right? I, I you know one of those rare times where I'm like, wow, I, I think this a, I think this is really competitive. So. Um, you know, I'll, I'll start with the horse I've talked about a bunch of times now, and, and we'll go back to again, the 12 Mugen. Um, you know, I think I said back when this was in class three, this is a class two horse, right? It's closing down. Um, I actually picked it last time and it lost. It just, it was too far back. It left itself too much to do. Um, but because it moves up to class two, it gets a 20 pound weight break off of that performance. Um, and that's a huge amount. And I think, you know, the closing kick here is, is, you know, just, gonna probably be the the tops in this field and and you know kind of let it go and, and close down right um you know i think the 10 global harmony is a very similar horse and can do a very similar thing if you look at its efforts right i mean visually that's impressive i think on figs alone it's it's not as impressive so i'm 
even though I love both of those horses and kind of, you know, talked them out of a singles both last time, I think I'm, I'm going to take the 12 Mugen and, and pass on the 10 Global Harmony. Um, partially, too, because I feel like, you know, Kara Steaton has ridden that horse two back and, and chooses the 12, obviously, um, over this. Um, James McDonald rode that horse last time. He is actually here. Um, he's here because there's a lot of graded races before this on the card, which I have not looked at, but um he is actually riding and i think he i forget what horse he's on but he's not on global harmony um so you get lyle hewitson and um for anyone watching wednesday i'm kind of pissed at lyle hewitson so yes, yes. i'm gonna i'm gonna take <laughs> i'm gonna take a pass in the 10 and, and go elsewhere um so you i think is my lone a um for b's i think i'm gonna take the one red lion obviously it was overmatched last time in the grade three um and it's moving down in class I'm not entirely sure what happened, right? It kind of faded out the back last time in that race. It was on the rail. It got a really good trip, um, but something happens. I don't know if it takes a bad step or, or what, but it, you know, it's on the rail, it's beaten and it just kind of pulls up. And, you know, I think they have to ride it out in Hong Kong or else they get suspended, but it, it's not really putting in an effort after that. But I do think the, you know, the, the race was probably a little bit better than the, the time and the performance would suggest. So I'm willing to give it another chance as a B um, and, you know, given there's a lot of speed sign on in here, I think, you know, can kind of sit that stocking trip and maybe, um, you know, inherit something, even if the course is playing forward, right. There's just a lot of horses in here that do want to go, um, and, and, you know, try to get on the lead. Um, and, you know, with that, I think, you know, if the horse or if the track is playing incredibly forward, I'm like, okay, well, what's that pace scenario going to look like? Um, I think, you know, there's, like I said, there's three or four horses that I think really want to go for the lead. I think the four, the five and the 11 all want to go, um, you know, out of those, I think I'd take the 11 superb boy. I think, you know, the five Dromberg banner and the 11 superb boy are very similar, right? They all want to do the same thing. Um, you know, they all kind of like this distance. They love this distance, right? They all kind of want to be there, but none of them ever passed a horse. And when that happens, I think I'll always default to the horse that's, um, got the lower weight and gets the break. So, um, you know, as a B, I'll go with the 11, uh, superb boy and, and kind of take a pass on the five Dromberg banner, even though, you know, again, I do kind of like that horse too. So, um, give me the 12 as an A and the one and 11 as B's. Well, you laid down that banner and I picked up the Dromberg banner, uh, because, uh, you know, I, I kind of w was, was right there with you, right? Um, th there does seem to be a, a fair bit of speed in this race, but we're also going seven furlongs. Um, you know, the, it'll probably be important to, to watch the races beforehand, see how the track is playing. If it's playing to speed, you're going to want to include at least one of these, I think, front runners. Um, and I'll say that I think the five is the more tactical of the horses. Um, if you kind of go, uh, you know, you go back a little bit, you know, he, he did kind of, or lat two races back, um, kind of missed, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. He didn't like break super great, um, but kind of got hustled up and, and got the lead. Um, so, um, you know, even with with that, not the great break, uh, was able to kind of still maneuver himself to to the lead and uh, and win there. Um, honestly, I think the the big thing for me is this is a horse that seems to love shot in and seems to love this distance. Um, you know, last time out goes to Happy Valley and just, you know, kind of runs out the back. Um, and, you know, maybe the track was just super against him that day. Um, or maybe just the, the horse didn't like Happy Valley. But, you know, the one start, they have a Happy Valley going, you know, a route distance. Um, just didn't really, uh, didn't really seem to fire. So, you know, we're coming back here, going at seven furlongs at unicorn distance. And, um, yeah, I, I think this is going to be a, a good spot. You know, he does, and he he loses some weight from uh, even the the two wins that he had. Um, so I know I, I think I think things are looking up uh, for for the five. So um, I I really don't hate any of the the front runners here, um, but I, you know I'm trying to to be skinny because like you, I kind of like the twelve here, um, and it, you know you pointed out a bunch of reasons why. Um, obviously getting a humongous break here and, and ran well last time out, um, just, I, I think was just not able to, to make up the amount of ground that, uh, that he needed cause he was just way too far back. Um, and you know, the, the two wins prior were obviously at a lower weight and yeah, he's coming up in the class, 
but I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if this is probably going to be your 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 favorite. I would guess. Um, I, I think people are going to see that form, see the weight break, and, and, and kind of bet it. And um, you know, he he was favored last time out uh, at uh, just under five to two. Um, but yeah, I, I expect this horse to take money. Um, but uh, you know, I I feel like this is one that you're going to have to use. So I, I was just five twelve here. Um, and, uh, I'll, I'll let, I'll let the rest of these horses beat me, but, um, yeah, I mean, I looked at that 10 for a real long time and then I, like, I was just like you, you know, why is James McDonald not on this and on this horse instead? He's, I think, was he right in the three or no, he's right in the two. How deep is your love? Yeah. Um, who was a and, very good horse, but I think he's a happy Valley horse person. Yeah. Right. So, but. You know, yeah. I, you're trying to pick at hairs here, right? This is a very competitive field. So, yeah, you know, but yeah, same sort of thing, right? I'm like, why, you know, do the jockeys know something that we don't? So, yeah. And like, you know, obviously we're, we're talking about this at, in, a, in a horizontal perspective, um, which, which is, I, it's just always different, right? Than betting, betting vertically. Um, you know, if uh, races like this are, us- are usually really good win bet type races, are usually really good quinella races because you get a flat board and like I'm like as long as you're not doing anything stupid like you're not bet, you know doing a quinella with the you know the top four choices or something like that like yeah it's flat but it's not going to pay anything um, but you know if, if you can kind of find one or two horses to key in a quinella or a trifecta and you you get a couple of those short prices out um, or shorter prices out, um, and, and get, you know, maybe a double digit horse in there, um, which could be the fifth or sixth choice with, with 12 horses. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think it's definitely going to be a race that's going to, going to have a nice payout, um, uh, vertically. So that might be one to, to kind of take a closer look at for, uh, for the vertical patterns. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're going to close it out with another seven for a long sprint here. And, um, you know, this, I, I think in this race, I think it's going to be hard to beat this 13. Um, and I think this 13, this is like the prototypical, like, lightly raced horse, you know, first time out, you know, runs pretty damn well at 8-1. to one, uh, And then what happens? They're like, all right, let's put Zach aboard. Let's stop messing around. Zach gets aboard, horse wins by open lengths uh, as the favorite, and uh, now stepping up in class here, but it gets the drop weight because the step up in class um, is is going an extra furlong. Uh, has had some trouble, I think, getting out of the gate. Uh, not not exactly the cleanest starts, um, but I think that that might just be something that you know as the horse you know develops and gets gets a little older, um, we'll uh, we'll just get better at. But um, yeah, I. I think the 13 is going to be pretty tough to beat in this spot, but um, you you know me and you know I love my speed. Um, the seven Hong Kong Hall uh, is is another horse that's stretching out, and this is a this is a horse that's got six for a long speed. It's got, I mean, it's kind of got five for a long speed, and now he's stretching out to seven furlongs. Um, this is one to watch out for. Once again, look at how the track is playing. Um, but this has just got he's got he's just got so much going for him in this spot that I really like. Yes, he's stepping up in class, but he's stepping up in class and he's losing twenty pounds because of the bug aboard. Um, and you know, it seems like it seems like they think this horse is pretty easy to ride or pretty push button because I mean, if you look at the horse's PPs, I mean, it's it's just gotten a different rider basically every single time this horse has run. So I think. Um, I think this is one that could get out there loose on the lead. Um, you know, the only negative I will say is this horse is going to be drawn kind of outside is in the nine post. So, you know, it it is tough to, to cross that many horses from the outside post. And I think you do have some pretty, pretty good horses drawn inside in the one and the two. Um, but you know, they're, they're definitely going to take back. So, I'm going to use the 13. I have an A written down for Hong Kong Hall. I have it written down as an A mostly due to price. He's probably more of a B type, but I just feel like 
if I don't use him prominently and he wins and like I, I win on like a saver ticket, like I'm gonna feel real dumb. And and I'm pretty I'm staying pretty narrow here, but uh I think the thirteen is gonna be tough to beat in this spot. Yeah, I, I agree with both those. And you know, I I don't think much else to be said about the thirteen other than um you know, one thing to note, this is a very flat race rating wise. So like normally, you know, you see the one horse be at 135 and the 14 horse be somewhere around 115. You get that 20 pound swing. Um, you know, I think the, the difference here top to bottom is like six pounds, right? Like the one horse is at 128, the 13 is at 122. Um, so at least rating wise, right? You expect us to be a very competitive field. Um, I think that benefits the 13, right? I mean, I, I think anytime you see a horse kind of coming up in class, right? Like, um, you know, even though it's picking up a fair bit of weight, it, it kind of indicates, hey, it's it's not settled at what that rating should be. It just can't move up fast enough. So, yeah, I, I think the 13 is probably the obvious choice here. Um, the 7, I, I do like. I think I agree with you. It's probably a B type. One thing to caution, I guess, every time I see an obvious pace scenario in Hong Kong, it tends not to play out that way. I don't know if <laughs> these guys check the same stuff we do and are like, well, that's BS. I can't let him get a lead and just, you know, kind of some random horse is going to send. Um, but it seems to work out that way. Hmm. You know, I think, you know, does like the 14 try and go, uh, I don't know, maybe, um, y- you know, I, who knows, but it, it just seems that way where like, anytime I think a pace scenario is really obvious that sometimes it doesn't work. So um, I do think it's worth using though, especially with the bug, right. It, it will be the low weight in that race because of the bug. So um, I think I must use, um, I did go a couple other places here too. I think the five silver up, um, you know, last out, it was in a shared race with a two horse, the air. Um, and it got dusted, I think by, um, by global harmony in that race, right? Like they're, eh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong race, but anyway, it's coming into a very, you know, it was playing in a very forward track and kind of, you know, is wide the whole way is charging pretty late. Um, based on the way track was playing, I think this course is fair. I think, um, to me that horse is a borderline a or b right um you know just the way that it was closing into the track today if it if it sets up better um i do like that horse um and then as a kind of a soft b i like the 10 um lost child you know i think anytime i see a horse kind of come in and off some pretty poor draws um and then you know kind of maintaining weight off of that you're saying okay you can make some excuses the last two and then you know have it draw back inside um Actually, 10 was the one who got buzzed out by Global Harmony last time. So, you know, moving in with the draw and saying, hey, you know, looking at that horse finished third to a very respectable horse that's, you know, going to be competing in class two in the race before this, um, you know, maybe it's good enough here. So, um, you know, I don't love uh, Eftela. I I feel like I'm always on his horses and he always (laughs) lets me down. But, um, hey, maybe this is the time. So, uh, you know, give me the 10 lost child as a B in there, too. Um, going wide to hopefully cash a ticket this week. So awesome! And I know I'm not going to ask you because I know that we, uh, you know, we kind of ended up putting this together last minute. So I know you don't like anything else, uh, or you haven't looked yet. <laughs> I, but... I have not looked, but they, but there are competitive races. There are graded races before that. Um, so you know, it's a good card, right? It's it's worth staying up for for those of you that hate sleep. So yeah, yeah, and and, and you know, if you guys are on Twitter, uh, you know, Matt's that he's every uh, every week and every Hong Kong race that he's putting down, he's putting out uh, you know some horses he likes. So you know, obviously follow him at Slow and Steadied. Um, I am at Cherry Drank. Obviously, you can check our stuff out on thewronglead.com at wrong underscore lead on Twitter. I think I downloaded another song. There we go. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, have a good weekend, guys. Enjoy. Good luck. See you.